G'day, how you going? Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru from Australia. I'm going to do a live painting this evening and I'm going to use a 12 by 16 and a half inch canvas. I will put the size and the colours that I use in this live stream in the comments below once I've finished filming. I've got me water. Uh, I've just got to grab some colours now, so I'll leave you over there until we get going. Uh, I want that. Get a bit of this in the putter on a brush. Now this is just craft paint. It's just a tiny and white, but it's a lot softer body, okay? I call it craft paint. Flow white, it's more of a flow paint. Now I wanna get the sky at least primed up in this so I can get some beautiful colors happening up there. And it's just gonna be gray, quinacridone red violet, and some cerulean blue. So this can come down to at least the horizon line. I've whacked it on there. All right, left and right, all into the two for the canvas. And now I'll just stroke it left and right, get that nice and smooth. This is something you can do. All right, now I'm just gonna wipe that brush. Uh, bear with me a minute, I'll find a, an appropriate rag. There we go, look at that. Okay, now, uh, what I might do is put the Mauve, oh, I'm calling it mauve, but I'm going to use this colour here. Now that paint is going to lighten it up, I hope. Let's me just have a little practice run over here and you'll get an idea what's going to happen on the palette, on the canvas there. See that? See what it's done? If I just put that on the canvas, it's going to be deep, dark and blotchy. But when I paint it onto the white, you get more lustful loveliness. So we'll grab some of this now on the brush. And I just want to do pretty much the center area. So pretty much straight across the guts of the sky. There's the guts of the sky. You can do it, can't you? Eh? All right, now I'm pushing that right in. I want this color in the sky. There we go. Now I'm going to gradually come down and up. But see how we have a hard line? I want to distort that in my mind. I'm distorting that line. So watch what I do. Dingle dangle there. So you see how it's bringing up the white? Careful not to make your, the guts of it too white. So we'll just carefully bring that up to there. Like that. Come back in the middle. If you feel you want to darken it up like that, just do it like that and stroke that like a lady or a gentleman. All right. Now I've got to wash this brush to get the blue in there, okay? Okay. Back down to the palettes. And I'm going to use my cerulean blue. I'll get a bit more there. Now what I might do is start from the top. No, I'll start from the bottom first. Just my preference. So I'm going to grind this right into the canvas. Now I've seen people, when I teach, they got it and they're doing like little bits like that. Have you ever heard me saying, just get right into it? I don't like doing that because you can be there a month of Sundays. I like to just get this bottom right in there, not mucking around. I haven't got no retarder, so I've got to hurry. And I'm going to bring this up to that quinacridone violet and then just gingerly and carefully merge the two together just like that. Okay, that worked out. I'm just watching the glare. Where's the glare over there? Now I've got to wipe that brush, just wiping it. Okay, I just wiped it. I'm gonna pick up some more cerulean blue and do the top half of the, the sky. Now, this blended to that color, this one up here, I wanna blend it and get that within up there as well. So I'm trying to come down to that quinacridone violet and then pull it up. And if I don't have enough, I can always get a little bit just like that. So as the top half has the quinacridone violet within the blue, because the sun's coming down, so it's shining up here, still reflecting up there, those colors in the sky there. Get a bit more of this right in there. I'm adding and adjusting as I go. I'm not doing all this kind of behavior down the bottom. Okay, no retarder in there, but hopefully it's wet enough for me to do some spunky clouds. 
All right, so I'll just sit that in the water for now. I'm gonna grab a brush and some white. So I'm down here looking for some white. I'll bring you down here so you don't get bored. Okay, so I've got titanium white and I've got gray. See the gray, the tone, it's actually toning gray mid. You can mix that up, but I'd rather just buy it because I'm filming and I don't wanna be sitting there mixing. If I can get it in a color already made, I will do that. Now what I wanna do, I'm not gonna put fluffy white clouds up there. I wanna get the, um, see this blue here and the gray. So I'm gonna start mixing the color that I want with that. Both sides of the brush, I'm mix, brush mixing, so I'm gonna get it evenly mixed in the brush as I'm doing that. Bit more blue, and we got a little bit of white to um, highlight them as well. I'm just gonna see how that's looking. Now I'm gonna get a bit of white. Let me just try a bit of this white over here. There we go. I'm just gonna, I'm just laying it against the canvas on the edge here just to see if the colour's getting there, but it's quite not there yet. So what I might do is get a bit of this because it's a dark colour, bringing it forward. There we go. Now I didn't put too much in there, just to keep adjusting and mixing until you feel it's right. I just want a dark, bluey, grey colour. So now I'm gonna adjust, I'm just gonna test that again up here. Yeah, I can see that. Once I put that on the canvas, you'll see it. And I want a couple of subtle clouds. So we'll do a few little ones first, just out here. Just something subtle there. And maybe something here. I can put that down like a gentleman. I'll grab that brush. And I wanna softly just bring the bottoms of them, tantalize them down into that sky, just like so. Pull it a little bit, just like so. Stamp away any ugly movements you don't like. Done. Now we'll come up here. Now I wanna make one around here coming there from the blue and into that violet. Now, as I'm blending, I'm always wiping my brush as well because it's building up paint. So we're gonna get this. Blended. Now, you, I know you can't see it too well yet, but um, bear with me. Once we get the white in there, you'll see stuff happening. My God, them cats are loud. I thought someone else was in here with me. I've got one over that side and probably a couple just up here into the um, sky here. Bigger, bigger, bigger. And I'm just sort of blending them down into that color there. Dancing it, stabbing it on and off, just till it kind of, I'm not, grinding the buggery out of it because I've got to have some colour there for the white. Okay, now we're going to highlight those clouds with the white. So I need to wash this brush. For those who don't know, I'll just show you how I wash my brush. I've got a couple of tubs down here. I've got this one here that you can't see. And this is the main one. See how that paintbrush is full of gunk and snot? This gets the bulk of the paint off. And I rub it up the side like that. Okay, and then this one again, and this one just rinses it. And that is clean, ready to go again. Now we'll grab that white, the titanium white that I had in the tube. And we'll try and blend some loveliness into these clouds if I can. So I'm coming on the top because I'm going to have a bit of a light source there. Who is that? Is that you Bernard or what? Twisting there. I'm trying to get some of this lustrating down into that grey bodied cloud. Who's there? One of my cats are there. They love it when I buy fish and chips. 
Oh, I love it. Now see what I've got there? I'll bring you a bit closer. And I've got my blending brush. I'm gonna set it on there and watch. I'm just dabbing and twisting, controlling that brush. Now see what I've made there? I've made a smear. You don't wanna smear the whole thing. You wanna have bits of light smear, heavy smear, twisting, turmoil. Some people have heard me use the word turmoil and you just create all this lovely luster within a cloud, no matter what color it is. And I always love, I'm gonna wipe it first, because look how much white's on there. I always love to start dragging a tail on them, watch this. So you've done that, you're doing that, and you just sort of Subtle, but it's there, it's subtle. Now see the top, you might like that, or you might just wanna tickle the top and just Lusterate that down so it's not so deliberate brushy looking, okay? And I'm gonna pretty much do that to the other clouds there, because now you can see that cloud, but these ones here, you can't quite see them yet. So see that brush, how it's contaminated? I wanna quickly wash that one again, and rinse it, and wipe it on the paper towel. Paper towels are brilliant for dabbing and dry. And we'll get, um, Let's start with, did I put one or two there? I can't see, it's very glary at night. I've got one there and one about here. So I've pretty much done the top. And if you see a bit that you, you like and you're ready to blend it and you think, well, I don't want to blend that because I like it the way it is. Well, that's what you do, you leave it like that. You're not always obligated to do what I tell you. I can only show you what I can paint, and if you like it, you follow my way. Now, I did put a bit too much on that cloud, so I'm, I'm in the one spot hoping I can make something out of it. But not to worry, I can grab that grey colour again and re-colour it with that colour. Now I'm going to dab this one down as well. I'll get you over here just so you can see. Nothing worse if you're trying to show somebody and your, your hands in the way doing it all. Hey, that'll be painful watching that. There we go. So see that one there? How it's a little bit um, bright? We'll just get some of that there. Wipe your finger, wipe your brush, and we'll model cop that back in there like so with the white. And you just playing around until things are happy the way you want them. A bit of white. Could probably just have the slightest now, just the slightest on top of these little ones that I put there. Just like that. And I'm gonna try and get the underneath part of that and drag it into that. I can't even use my finger, it's that damn small. Yeah, there you go. It doesn't have to be a brush. Just something subtle. Because see, my brush started pushing all that blue colour down to the canvas. All right, we can keep going with that till the cows come home. That'll do for our, um, uh, for our sky. I just want to grab a little pouncer, if it can come to play with me. I'm going to grab uh, just some of this because it's softer and some titanium white. Now this titanium white's nice and thick. And I'm gonna have this here. So I'm just gonna boom, 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 boom. I'll just make some kind of circle like that. Okay, pretty simple. Um, I'll wipe. See this, how it's quite loaded. I'm just gonna wipe it into that a bit, just so as I can hopefully stamp that hard edge on the outside of that circle softer. See, like so. There we go, there we go. Yep, that's exactly what I wanted to happen. Now I'm going to grab simple bit of, let's say, 
Is that yellow ochre or... Oh, I don't want yellow ochre, you dag. Sorry, wrong colour. I want Indian yellow. I thought that was yellow ochre. I'm just rubbing it on there with the tube so as I can get a flat sheet to put inside this pouncer. Because I want a bit of yellow into that sun. Okay. Nothing too heavy, just something that can be there, if you know what I mean. Now, does that look too... Yeah, that's all right, that'll do it. This is going to have some weird colours in it, but it'll be a beautiful, colourful painting for those who want a beautiful, colourful paint. All right, simple, done. I need to dry this now, just this part here where I can get the next bit going on. Now, pretty much find your horizon line, which is... I'll get all this painted on first. This will make the colours for the water stand out as well. Because we are going to have some beautiful dioxine. I'm not going to tell you, I'm going to let it be a surprise. So we got that there. I better grab some more of that and some more of that. I'll just grab some more um, cerulean blue and um, quinacridone uh, violet. Big words, eh? Cerulean, phalo, dioxine, quinacridone. Okay, so we'll get a bit of blue going in the water. So we'll get that first. Just pretty much going to mirror image the sky. So we'll get that about there. Get some more in, my goodness. I need some more because there's no retarder in this. It does work different without any retarder. That's the horizon there. Okay, I'm wiping it on the borders, I'm massaging it in, picking up the the quinacridone violet. I'm getting that there like that. Now I'm just going to blend the two. See how I'm getting a big thing there? What I'm going to do to combat that, get this going here, straight across, is I'm just going to pick up some of the craft white, if I've got enough and lighten the load of that. There we go. I tell you what, it still needs a bit more cerulean. Cerulean's dying there, isn't it? Okay, there we go. Got it, that's good enough. Good enough image reflection from the sky. Now we do have this light source there. What we can do is, um, I'm gonna wipe this brush on the paper towel like that. Now it's dirty, it's rotten, it's snotty, it's full of all sorts of business. But I want to chisel edge and load the edge of that brush up. I mean, you can use your finger. I'm just going to do it this way. Hopefully it'll work, you know. Hopefully it will. And we're just going to come down from here. I'll do this actually. I was going to smear it right down, but what that does, it'll bring all this watercolour back to white. I don't want to do that. I'm going to do this, and then I'll, I'll um, get the brush sideways. This is just, I was down the river the other night, and I saw the water looking like this, so that's why I'm doing this now. And I'm getting some, as it's down lower in the water, it's sort of more scalloped out and looking a bit like that. Now it does look a bit mumble jumble, but you can give your brush a bit of a wipe. And you can either use this brush if it's not too dirty and waterfy all that. Boom, boom, boom. Done. Don't touch it anymore. That's it. Done. You've waterfied a simple glare. And if you really want, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. Uh, how's that going to go, that bit of yellow there? That's it, mate. Leave it alone. Don't touch it no more. I mean, you can go to town if you want. I'll do it because it is a tutorial. You can go to town if you want. Grab yourself a simple little bit of, um, what do you call it? Um, there's my spurty bottle. Craft paint, the soft body paint. 
I just put a puddle of water next to it like that and then flatten that out. I bring this into it. Now as you're loading this up, where are we? Load it flat. Don't load it like that. Load it flat and you just want the right amount of juicy paint on it just so as you can get some shimmer on the water which is the light and we'll do it mainly from about here cascading out so I'll pull my finger forward a bit and we'll start going oh yeah from here this is where the shimmers mainly and I can sort of come out there a bit there I'll come up there a little bit and probably stop about there just like that there we go and this will just add more bullshit realism to the fantasy coloured painting that you got, I suppose. You can put a little dead stick in here for reflection, all sorts of business. But there, there we have it done. I'll, that'll, I'll look in the monitor. That's looking reasonable. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to dress the middle up and finish the top off as well, okay? So I want to get my um, filbert brushes and I want to get some beautiful um, dioxine purple and white. So we've got dioxine purple down here. So we'll get enough of that. We'll get there and there. Okay, now I'm just looking for my filbert brushes. I've got one, I'm just looking for the other one. So I'm, uh, where are you? I've got a big one and a medium one there. Can you see there? So I'll see, I think I'll use this one. Now what I'm going to do, I'll also give that a little bit of water so it's gonna transfer from the brush to the painting. Now I'm gonna block it in just with full blown, full on, dioxine purple okay and a little bit of water just to get it inky consistency now there is the middle of the painting and there's the outside edges it's important you bring these into the middle of the painting like that okay I'll show you what I mean uh, here's the edge um, we'll come about here just to the horizon line. Now I'm just bringing all this to the middle of the painting. See, coming into the middle like that. I'm coming into the middle like that, so to speak. Uh, put some air in between some of these. Now, when me and um, the lovely lady that was with me last week, we painted this, this color was well, an orange sky actually, but I'm going for this flavor because it's quite a popular flavor. Now what you pretty much do you, you come a bit higher as you're coming off the painting. It's just more um, artistically pleasing to look at. It, it, just imagine if I ran that down like that, it just doesn't have the charisma that the painting needs. So you get this, if anything, coming up off the painting. Now I've got my height. I'm getting the air in between. Now this is basic nonsense, but I tell you what, it's an effective painting. Now where the horizon line is, I'm just going to roughly there for now, just so I can get my bearings. Um, I'm blocking it in. Pretty simple, you can do it. Blocking it in just like so, to the horizon line. Now have a look, sit back, and I'm thinking, yeah, he's a bit all right, but it sort of can do with some more unevening. So I'll come up there like that. Boom, bitty, boom, something there like that. And once you're happy with it, that's it. Now all I've got to do is pretty much mirror image that in the water. So I'm going to come down like so and just give it some light scratchy pull. So you want them scratchy, but see, I'll just show you here. See how you can see the hard line? You want to scratch that away when you do this. So you've got a distorted scratchy line. So there, we'll get that scratchy there and if there is an element that's sort of distinctive up there you can tr probably try and just replicate that in the water as well there's a bit there and a bit of an eerie one there and a bit of an eerie one there you see what I've done there simple simple little things you can do with your art now I'm going to simply just do that to the other side but 
this might look a bit, Ian, that, that looks like snot, it's dark, it's horrible. Wait till we finish it. Now I'm going to start in the middle there, pulling out, coming up, bringing some air in. Filbert brushes I find are so great for this. So we've got it down to the horizon line there, and pretty much the same on this side now. We're going to pull down, dab it and pull down. You've got to make sure the, the guts of it, see here, is not hollow like that. It's got to be solid. Down to there, pull down. There you go. And only from the horizon line, which is about there, is where you do your scratch marks. Don't scratch it all the way from up there because if you see them, it'll give the painting that bit of a what happened there sort of look. How long was that all for? I'm going to dry that. Now I'm going to grab the, oh here we go, remember how I put two piles down here? I'll we'll grab a bit more over that now and we're going to grab the good titanium white and we're going to highlight that now. This is dioxane purple and titanium white, okay. So now we've got a mid-tone value of that mixed up ready to rock and roll and dab on with our filbert brush. Now I'm pretty much going to use the same brush that I did that foliage on. Now don't do it as much, okay? Don't do it as much. It froze on mine but it's back, yeah, I froze on mine as well. So we're going to gingerly get the very top and just here and there highlight it with this. Now you know where your horizon line is, don't go all the way down past that, you've got to keep that dark band within the guts of it and I'll show you why later. Right at the very tops and bring these, these are all bowing into the middle of the painting, okay? Leave some good dark bits there, see I'm leaving dark bits, right at the top of that bit, right at the tops and I'll bow some other bits. Try not to get them thick and blobby if you can help it, you want them sharp and find the best. Uh, look at this nice bit, way up there, yeah, nice and fine, take your time, keep it fine, take your time, keep it fine, yeah. Now we'll get, there's me horizon line, so I'm deliberately keeping that dark. See, now I bought this bush in front of that dark bit, that's what I just, something I do when I do bushes, and I'll bring that a little bit behind. If a bit of luck that might look behind us yet. And something there. Now the same again, just but just lightly, just these ones you put on and pull down here and there. Roughly. See, I'm just hitting it and pulling it down. Don't try and go like this and pull it down because you might make it too blobby. And this makes the wet reflection on dry paint look wet. There we go, and I'm going to quickly do the same to the other side. Just roughly where they are up top, keeping them straight. A bit more. Well, I thought I might have had to mix up more, but I had plenty of paint. Okay, now we can dry that again. Now, where's my titanium white? I'll grab some more titanium white. Now, I've just got what I've got in my brush and I'm going to make that the next value. So you can see dark, medium, and this one's going to be the lighter value, okay? And you want less of this again. So what I'm going to do is just mix it. Now I'm going to have to rewash the brush because see how fat, fat and gluey that, I'm not going to be able to get nice, sharp, stampy bits on there which is what I want so I'll just keep mixing I won't fret about oh it's too thick and blobby and try and get it all off I'll just do that and then I'll simply wipe all that business off like so I'll give it a quick rinse and squash it in between the towel so it's not soaking wet now watch I can load this up Nice and sharp. Now look at that compared to that. See the difference I can make? And we're going to do pretty much the same again, but even less of the highlight. So we could probably 
the, the finer you can get this, oh my goodness, the better it'll be. Now see what I've done here. What goes on in my mind? I bring this one now right in front of that one. Plagiarise it back there. And I've made different steppings and settings of all this. Let's call them mangroves. They sort of look mangrovey, don't they, on the water like that? Now you don't want them too bright either. Don't get them too bright. And now where you've got a lot of dark, like I'll bring this one down. Okay, where you've got a lot of dark, you can probably just scallop one in there. Boom, buddy, boom, boom. And then this is going to, it'll look all right once it's done, I hope. Let's see how we go. It's a simple beginner's painting can do this. A lot of things you can learn when doing it and um, you need to practice them. And you'll have fun in your art journey doing these things and you'll, evolve and develop from it as well. Oh, those cats, it sounds like humans out there. I'm on my own. So come down here. Now we'll do the subtle, just touching it and pulling it down here and there. See like that, just scratching it. Some, some's about there, there's some about here. There's some there. It doesn't have to be perfect, so long as it's within reason of what's up top, you'll be right. And if you feel there's a blob that's too bright, grab your darker color and um, see like there, I just did that too bright, you dag. Um, grab your darker colour and just re-darken it again. And that's how you do simple reflections on dry paint. Now see how important it was to keep that dark there? Because that's pretty much your waterline. Without that, it'll look a bit naked. Got some colours out there. Bring some of this forward there. I'm just pulling it straight down, scratching it. A little bit more. I tried to have a look in the monitor, but because I'm using my iPhone, I could see all the comments going across the screen. It's hard to see. Anyway, there we go. Yeah, see, I'm, I'll show you what I mean. Some of that bright stuff's a little bit too bright so i just grabbed the darker dioxine on its own i'm looking in the monitor and where do i feel you know i can just sort of prance that back a little bit just get rid of some of those really blobby bits that i don't feel i like i do want to put a couple of just over here stones or something. Oh, you don't want them looking like that. There you go. Bit of an egg shape. This is just, I'm just adding this now just because I want it. Just because I want to. You can probably get the edge of your brush and do some really minute ones all the way. These are just sitting out of, out of the water there. We'll set them down in a minute. Okay, grab your liner brush. Now, I do want to show people, I do know people have had trouble with um, trees, branches and limbs and stuff like that. So I'm getting that dioxine purple. You can use black, mix a bit of black with it. I'm just going to use dioxine purple because it's here and it's dark. If it looks too light, I will change it. Now, I want this, some distinct fingers so what, you, what I like to do, because to me, you know, we don't want to do round, you know, branches like that. They're not wavy and round, are they? 
it's so easy to make a rule and how you do that, I'll, I want to get one from the guts here first. So you sort of boom, boom, let some nodes happen. Let the brush twist, boom, work out where you're going to go next and go a bit wider, boom. Okay. We'll get another one. See the nodes happening on the like where the elbows are, they're big knobby knees and knobby elbows. I'm going to have one sort of big fat one here coming off. Now I do have to, I'll grab my mouth stick. I'll get that one a little bit thinner there. So I'll just trace him in. That's it. And then from those big, I'll get another one here maybe first. Whoops, I missed. So we'll start again, nice and thin. Doesn't matter if you get a node there, see? Boom, boom. Twist your brush so you're keeping it sharp. There. Something here. Crisscross them as well, so as they're um, not looking flat. Okay. Boom. And once you've done that, you can get your little scragglers, like so, and then start putting them on wherever, accordingly. Nice and thin to the edge. And that's just a way, if you want, to try and do some realistic looking twigs instead of them being too round and um, branchy. I mean, you know, not real looking. Something there crossing. Things have got to cross over. We'll get another one coming down appropriately. Twist your brush. If you're coming downwards, stop. And then you can come out with the other main branches and then we can give them the little finer ones and the forks and get them crossing over as well just so as they look a bit real I mean it's gonna I'm not gonna do all of them on the video but you'll get an idea I can do the rest later See, they just make themselves up. Big fat one coming down. Make sure your paint's see how tall you've got to start again and just those nodes look good on them. Twist your brush. Just even practice this as a procedure. I'll go see how it stopped right on the edge of there? Always cross things over. Whether it's something, a tree on a mountain edge or something. Uh, you don't want to leave them like that. It's just more pleasing to the eye when they cross each other's paths. All right, I'll, I'll detail that some more later. I just want to quickly put my mail stick up there and um, grab the purple. Is that dry? I better dry them and grab some of this and just put some of the rocks back and forth from each other. Uh, so I want to keep the dark pretty much on the water line where I feel the water's wrapping around the stone. So I'm just jingling it there, putting some sort of light hitting it. And I want to just come there some of this paint on there, it's very dark. Some of this there. I'm just kind of putting the background rocks in like so. You'll see once I've done it. And now we'll put this one in front of there, just like so. Bit of a big stone there, there we go. And this is another stone there. There we go. 
And another one here about boom, bidi, boom, boom, in front of that one. I just want to, I meant to do it in one of my other paintings where I was doing stones and I forgot to do it, so I'm going to do it in this one. I want to show you a little thing that I do. I love doing it. Simply wipe your brush from that procedure and grab the lighter colour and less of this and just some light scratches on the tops there, hitting those rocks there. the tops of them and maybe the right hand side tops of them right hand side it just sort of sits them all back from each other can I have a look in my monitor of that <laughs> oh my god not the best but oh, I'll darken that bit back up what did I do there now what I do, I grab my liner, I'm just going to grab some a little bit of black and very inculate it, which means the brush is very wet. Now, where are we? You want this not too watery, but you want it enough. And what I like to do in my rocks, uh, let's get over there so the shadows, is... Um, Let's say this one here, just put little, you know, like I did branches in the sky. Sometimes I like to just put little, little splits and cracks within me rocks, just on mainly the big ones. Coming down there. A bit of water, dark where the waters are wrapping around them there. You can have some darker areas in there if you want. But yeah, I don't know if you can see them or not, but I normally do that over me rocks. So I've pretty much got the glaze and I don't really like putting um, knife marks on their big thick cartoon white knife marks. So I'm getting some of the craft white. Now you don't want too much in there. I'll wipe some of that off. And now we just want to use this glaze. And this is going to be see-throughy. It's going to create the film on the water. It creates the film on top of the water. And the best way to get this stuff looking good is you grab your bullshit stick. Right, I'll just... Oh, is this going to be good enough? Yeah, I'm just going to get some intense bits out there first. Just like that. Now, where are we? I hope I don't bug it. See that black line? You want to sort of come across there where the water's hitting that shore there. And we're pretty much just sinking the reflections down. Too much on the brush, I'll wipe some off. Sink that back down. And instead of using a knife, you're using this brush and the, the bullshit stick. If I can get to hit the canvas, see there, it keeps them straight. I'll get this one going right across there, right across there. There we go, some down here, turn the brush around about there. And this just puts film on top of the water. Now with the glaze, I have learned, once you get it on there, try and just do one or two passes in the one spot. If you keep rubbing it in like you think you're painting, it'll start ripping your paint up and you'll go, oh, what happened? So you've been warned. Come out there, come out there. And this just, try and get them straight in. This just adds film to your water. Does that look like film? Yeah, a bit, a bit blodgy, but um, yeah, where are we? I'll try and get, if I can, some sitting around here, around where the rocks were, and some of these rocks. Just nice and straight.
you can even put some wind a big group of it like this this is like the wind hitting the water you know this adds detail and bullshit elements to your paintings let me have a look does that do what I said it was yeah it's sort of like wind all right I better sign that so what color can I use I'll use a really dark purple down there on the lighter purple and then we'll whack a frame on it as well so we tapes there I want to thank all my patrons who support my content every month. Check out the links in the description below. Share, like and subscribe. And if you feel you want to support my content, you can either become a patron or simply purchase my art or um, sim simple PayPal donation. Um, all the links are in the description below. Message me on Facebook if you want to purchase any of the blending brushes I use or a painting of mine. Now, we'll put a... Um, uh, what do you call it? We'll whack a frame on there, see how she looks. I'm going to do some more to this when I'm off camera, but it, you know, I don't want to spend all night here. Carrying on. There we go. How's that? I'll tell you what, it don't look too shabby in a frame, does it? I don't know what we'll call it. We'll call it a violet moonlit birch. No, they're not birches, uh, mangroves. Violet moonlit mangoes or something. I'll give it a name anyway. And just remember, you can do it. All right, I hope you had fun and you learnt something from this little exercise. Very colourful, something different. It's not realistic, but it looks all right in a frame and it'll look great on your wall. And just remember, if you like what I'm doing on my channel, you be sure to tell your friends, all right? But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.